I wanted to talk about a video regarding sort of all sorts of prepping and how I don't think many people are actually well prepared for any sort of disaster whatsoever no matter how serious or not serious it is so what we're going to look at today is what are the essential things you need for prepping and what are sort of just accessories and we'll go into that there so obviously the world's not a very safe place in many countries there are sort of bad things happening and I think many people want to know how can they prepare themselves the worst so what I wanted to look at is what do you really need for prepping and what sort of nice accessories and what's a waste of space so obviously I'm quite into gas masks as a collector and having at least one respirator is a very good idea per person with obviously spare filters but it's not necessarily the highest thing on the list now this should go without saying, the highest thing on the list for anybody prepping is a lots and lots of bottled water. Simply because, obviously, human bodies need water to survive, all living creatures, as far as I'm aware, need water to survive. You're going to need a lot of it if you don't know how long till help arrives. The same goes for canned food. Obviously, you're going to need canned food to survive in any sort of scenario or other preserved food that will last a long time. Um, obviously the longer the date the better because it means you can buy it well in advance and not have to worry about when it's going to run out. Things like that. The other thing you can do obviously if you're not um, going to be you know actively buying lots of bottled water is every time you drink a bottle of bottled water rather than throwing it away you can refill it if it looks like something bad's going to happen and keep those bottles of water stored full of water. Same thing goes for really in the event of emergency, what you can do is just start filling up buckets and things like that around your house with drinkable tap water before anything bad happens and the water supply may be cut off. There you've got a big supply that way. See what I've got on here, body armour, Kevlar level 2, not obviously the strongest armour in the world but good enough maybe for what I need. And obviously, if you, because the problem I think a lot of people don't consider is that if you are having all these sort of items, food and water, whatever, stockpiled in your house in case of an emergency, what happens when people want to get the food and water, the most basic of supplies, you're going to become a target. So obviously you need defensive gear on and armaments to defend yourself. That really goes without saying. A lot of people seem to view a lot of the prepper stuff as, you know, you can do one thing or the other. There's lots of people waving lots of guns around saying I'm a prepper but they don't have any survival gear. And there's, you know, the ones the opposite way around where they've got lots of food and water but they haven't ever thought that people might come looking for that stuff. So you need a good balance of the two. You know, doing excessively one way or the other isn't sensible. As I've said to people many times on here, I take light sort of prepping duties in the sense that I've looked up various scenarios I have quite a bit of bottled water around the house and canned food but at the same time I'm not going to waste loads and loads of money buying you know stupid amounts of it. The way I see it really is in some sorts of survival scenarios if your odds are so slim there's no point trying to you know work your way up to protect yourself from them. So what you should really do is first think about what's going to happen in your area if there's a disaster and you should rank those from what's the most likely thing to happen to the least likely thing to happen. Obviously that will vary depending on where you are in the world. In some countries there are active conflicts going on, in others there's sort of things brewing that look like they could turn into conflicts. In other countries it could be petrol shortages, food shortages, water shortages, you know, not just safe tap water, things like that, flooding, natural disasters, what have you. So you need to weigh up really all the stuff that you're going to need and what's the most likely scenarios that are going to happen to you in your area so you can make plans and you should obviously rank your survival prepping sort of gear from most likely to least likely if something's most likely that's what you should obviously spend more time focusing on not the least likely scenarios so obviously there's that and then again can you survive something like this and should you really worry about surviving it so a good example of that like I did a video the other day on this nuclear war if you're in the middle of a big city and the bomb drops, you're dead. So there's not much point in prepping for nuclear war, you know, survival stuff. However, if you lived somewhere really far away from any sort of target, survival, you know, nuclear survival gear, 
such as Geiger counters and you know things to block out radiation as much as possible and fallout are much better options but if you think logically about it many of the survival scenarios things cross over each other so if there's something that's going to be good like food and water for nearly any survival scenario imaginable that should be the top of your list and this is where I think a lot of people go wrong as said they decide that things that should be much lower down the list get a priority and then they waste all their budget for what they have preparing that stuff so they have lots and lots of the stuff that's not very useful or would only be useful in certain scenarios and they prioritize it over food and water so as I said food and water are your main things as I have said a respirator I think is always a good option simply because a respirator allows you to clean breathe uh, uh, allows you to breathe clean air and obviously breathing contaminated air is very bad for you I can think of many scenarios where you might want a gas mask or respirator such as industrial chemical leaks volcanic eruptions obviously nuclear war as I said terrorist attacks either dirty bombs or chemical weapon attacks that sort of thing so a lot of people just assume a gas mask would be for some sort of chemical warfare scenario but if you look at all the things a respirator can actually protect you against, the list goes much further, so they become a worthwhile investment just for that reason. Now, obviously, if you're in a country where it could either get very cold or very hot with sort of shifting weather patterns, then obviously cold or sort of hot water survival, hot weather survival gear even, um, is what you really want to be looking at for that. So I said it's about looking at what's going on in the world near you, what could affect you and preparing for that, but as I said, food and water is the main thing and then something to defend yourself with in case of people coming after your food and water. Everything else really is much more situational, so you should spend your budget and time looking at what you're likely to encounter, not everything you could encounter, and then prepare for that accordingly.